chip meat. <laughs> Ten minutes and planning and change. <laughs> Ten minutes and planning and change. You're probably sitting there wondering what's Peter going to talk about for 10 minutes. Surely plans are intimately related to change and they emerge from a rational process in which senior people in an organisation evaluate the, the gap between what they, the context demands and the organisational capacities as they stand just now. They produce an analysis which is embedded in planning documents and maybe even a, a degree of project planning around the deliverables and the expectations and the timeframes for the for the change. Those are enacted and there's detailed planning happens in there and the improved situation comes out at the end. That might be true or might have a degree of truth in it, but it's not reflective of the type of things that senior people say about the planning process. Uh, Alan Lakin says that um, planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. So, so that sort of emphasises the uh, a, a debate about thinking about uh, the, the the nature of what the uh, the future might hold and adjusting towards that one. Eisenhower does, goes even further. He says that plans are useless. Planning is everything, and I think that's got a really nice ring to it of saying it's not about the document that you produce. It's about thinking about the nature of the contingencies that might emerge, so that you can be adaptive to what uh, unfolds as you as you try to take action. And in some ways, that um, idea of contextualising, of building a, a, a knowledge, an adaptive knowledge, is reflected in Peter Drucker's quote. Not a man that I, I often quote, but uh, plans are only good intentions unless they immediately degenerate into hard work. So I think what he's trying to signal within there is to say, it's great, but actually it's the enactment, it's the taking from an abstract set of paper and documents into the everyday practices that become really difficult and that's where change management starts to kick in properly. Now I'm going to use an example to try and illustrate what, uh, something more about plans and the one that I'm going to pick up is the, is the um, 2016 referendum to leave the European Union or Brexit as it's become known. Now, I'm not doing that simply for political reasons, but because there was something remarkable about plans immediate that followed on from that. Within a matter of hours, there was a degree of incredulity over the fact that nobody seemed to have a plan. The Prime Minister of the country, who had been campaigning for a Remain vote, had no idea what would happen if people voted to leave. Even the Brexit campaigners didn't seem to have a plan. Indeed, they said, oh, well, that's not for us to do. That's up for the government to do. Why have they not got a plan? Which seems, anyway. <laughs> so, yes, um, the political point, uh, it's not to make a political point in here, but it is to say, of look at the nature of plans and what people expect. There is an expectation that there is rationality, that there is predictability in place, that you could see in the days and months that followed on from that, that decision. There was continued debate about what is it? What are we going to do? Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? There was loads of stuff that was emerging and made it problematic for the government to show that they were in charge. So leaders and, and of organisations almost have the ex expectation of having done plans. That's remarkable in itself. But once you've declared the nature of the plan, then there was a real storm once again. People within the, the organisation or in, within the country were critical and said that they would block it, and they, that there were things that hadn't been thought through that were ridic probably ridiculous. And those that were affected by the change out with it, uh, particularly direct partners like the, the European Union, rejected what was being said as being hard Brexit. So they were they, there was immediately a debate over what something uh, meant as a plan and whether it was appropriate.
and it's ones that's uh, very much in the uh, at the heart of the Bryson Crosby and Bryson paper, where they start to look at sort of plans as ways of knowing. Okay, and when you say way of knowing, it's trying to say that actually it's part of a, a, a an embedded set of practices that people are engaging in. Okay, so it's not just about uh, what the plan says, it's about the way that what it says is embedded within the types of processes, the practices and people that are uh, that form the basis of that organisation. Okay, and now, therefore it's going to start to transform the organisation and the objects that are involved. Now that's probably blowing your mind in terms of action, but I want to highlight to you that it's a real shift from thinking about art planning as being something that has an input, I make plans, I do stuff to it, and I have an output, to being planning as an unfolding set of occurrences, as a part of an ongoing negotiation of what it is to be an organisation and in an organisation. That involves a shift from thinking about planning as routine, as something that we do and enact, to planning as something that involves expectations and a uh, perform points of performativity that means what things that we have to do and a move from thinking about plans as being an intermediary between senior people and the the realities of what's doing to thinking of planning as a mediator of of changing and unfolding actions okay so it's a little bit more complex a little bit softer and a little bit more complex i have to say it relies in Brisby, Brisby, Crosby, uh, Bryson Crosby and Bryson's article on a theory called actor network theory. Now, <clears throat> it's a really complex area. It involves quite a lot of high language, but I'm just going to emphasise with for you that actor network theory tries to ignore the fact uh, or equalise the fact that it's not just humans that are involved in doing anything within organisations. It's about the melding of processes, people, and uh, actors, by what, which they mean usually machines, markets, money, and what have you. So it's the non-human and humans together in a network that makes things happen. So if I took, for example, me and my, my mountain bike, I have a mountain bike which is an, a, a cross-country one. It's good for doing some actions, but it's not going to do, do you going down a very bumpy mountain. So I don't do downhill on it. Equally, I can't do road cycling, not only because I'm old and unfit, but because it's not aerodynamic and it's not light. And it's that melding of the human me and the machine, the bike, that makes things happen. Okay, So that's the idea of actor network theory, on with the case. What they did was they looked at the, the, the planning of a transport authority and they looked at loads of stuff in there. They looked at the, the plans themselves, the outputs and what they were expecting. And then they looked at the practices and what actually unfolded in the, uh, in the organisation itself. What they discovered was that um, they found that plans started to have an effect, but quite often they perished. They, they wouldn't have the full effect, they would become discredited, they would start to be uh, contested at various, uh, various levels. So people were not following the plan, but they were enacting in some way a planness. You know, they were kind of doing stuff that uh, helped with the performative aspect of the plan without necessarily achieving the aims of the plan. So they were socially producing and legitimating what they did, as well as legitimating what they what they were doing in terms of the plan. So it was a real in-between situation. So plans have persistence, they stay, but they become perishable in the sense of the absolute of the plan dissipates. But the essence of what it was trying to do, the evolving themes, they recur, they, they stay, they hang around in the organisations. So they are intervened and they're in, they intervene in people's practice and they're also intervened upon by people as they, they rebel, as they argue, as they redirect activities. So what I'm trying to produce within here is trying to look at what they say as, as plans as being mediators, they're transformative, they look at the, the meeting of ideas and, and objects.